Happy Monday afternoon, everyone out there, or whatever day it is. If you happen to be watching this on replay, it's all good. This is this is an evergreen topic, so whenever you decide to watch it, the, the material will still be relevant. Actually, you know what? I hope, my hope is that this material is no longer relevant. I hope that there comes a day when somebody can watch this video and say, damn, it was like that in 2020. And it's not like that anymore. So I hope that this material becomes irrelevant. All right. So I'm telling everybody right now off the top. This is what I'm telling everybody off top that though my content is always evergreen, most of the time I'm not talking about current events. This is technically not a current event, but it is kind of a current event. I'm hoping that this is a current event. OK, I appreciate everybody coming in. Shout yourself out in the comment section. I shout a couple people out as we get started here. <clears throat> Let me shout a couple people out before these comments go too long and I can't catch up. Cupertino was good. Shout out to Apple out in Cupertino. Mozart Gay said that Labor Day worked. Yeah, I didn't even re remember that it was Labor Day. Michael Aaron, I appreciate you. Thank you for checking in. So everybody, I'm going to give everybody like 30 seconds to come in. Then we're going to get right into the topic. Y'all see what the topic is and the title. Uh, the pinned comment right here on IG. I got Facebook also out to my left. So for any of y'all who's never not on IG, my Facebook is Facebook slash work on your game. So if you ever want to watch the live on your laptop or TV or whatever you could do, I guess you could watch IG lives nowadays on your computer, too. So you can also check in at Facebook slash work on your game. But anyway, San Jose is in the house as well. Anyway, like I told you, all I don't usually talk about current events. I hope that this live right here goes down as a current event. I hope that. A year from now, six months from now, a decade from now, somebody comes across this recording and they watch it and they say, damn, good thing the situation is not that anymore. I don't want this to be an evergreen topic. All right. The topic that I'm talking about today, I do not want this one to be most of the topics that I talk about when I talk about business principles or how to sell your product or how to find your voice or how to formulate an argument or you know why this person is generating more energy than that person or how to be more disciplined or how to build your confidence up or how to develop mental toughness and use it how to take initiative and make things happen in life all those are are all of those are evergreen topics meaning you can talk about them anytime and they will be relevant at all points this topic here today i'm hoping that it is no longer relevant in the future the topic as y'all can see is how black people became sheep now, when I say sheep, y'all know I mean this metaphorically. I'm not saying that black people actually became these four-legged, hooved animals that have wool and they, you know, a shepherd moves them around. I'm talking about sheep as in metaphorically, meaning people who just follow the herd, don't think, uh, don't really consider why they're doing what they're doing. And you no know, sheep get walked into slaughterhouses, in case y'all didn't know. All right, sheep. Like a, a whole lot of other animals. Any of you ever seen all those, any of those food documentaries where they kill the animals, they slaughter the animals for food? Sheep will walk right into a slaughterhouse, not because the sheep is a, a complete imbecile. It's because the sheep is a herd animal. They just see everybody else doing it. They do the exact same thing without thinking, even if it's walking to their own death. And I'm not saying black people are walking to our death, but we very well could be as a group. I'm not saying every individual person. So what we're going to talk about here today I'm going to share with you how black people have become sheep. And we're going to talk about how this can be fixed, because I'm not a person who's just going to point out, oh, these are the things that are wrong. Here's some problems, but not offer any solutions. So most of the time when I'm making my content, I talk about here's how you can get better at this. This is how you do this. This is how you do that, because the content is called work on your game. Of course, I'm showing you how to improve your game. I didn't even introduce myself. So for those of you who don't know me, my name is Dre Baldwin, also known as Dre All Day. Former nine-year professional athlete, author of 27 books. I've done four TED Talks. I created this whole philosophy that is called Work On Your Game. That's the title of this book right here. It's all about taking the mental tools that are necessary to succeed in sports, which I use, and using those same tools in business and in life. So today's topic, again, how black people became sheep. I hope this topic becomes irrelevant six months from now. Well, let's find out. Point number one. We follow without thinking. This is what a sheep does. I'm talking about the actual animal. It follows around the herd or the sheep dog or the shepherd without even thinking about why it's following. Well, we don't know if the actual sheep animal is thinking. I think research shows they do actually think. But sheep's their nature is that they're just going to follow. They're very loyal and meek animals. With black folks, we follow without thinking, meaning that whatever or whomever is popular, 
we follow it and we don't question it. And a lot of people have been asking about, uh, y'all might have seen on social media in the last 24 hours, Candace Owens, who's a black woman, conservative, very conservative voice, she criticized uh, Cardi B and Joe Biden for the interview that they did together. So if y'all didn't know, Joe Biden was running for president. Y'all probably know that. He was interviewed by, quote unquote, interviewed by Cardi B like two weeks ago. And I, Cardi B was asking some dumb questions. She was doing Cardi B things. She was doing what she does. She's an entertainer. I know what I'm going to get when I hear Cardi B is going to be talking. I knew exactly what to expect. Joe Biden knew what to expect. Everybody who watched it knew what to expect. And we got what we expected. It was nothing of substance said in the conversation, which is all fine and good as far as I'm concerned. But Candace Owens did not feel that way. She felt strongly about it. She had some strong negative opinions towards Cardi B. Now, she knows what Joe Biden was doing. He was using Cardi B to get some attention for his campaign. And he knows he was doing that. Cardi B probably knows he was doing that. But she was all too happy to be a part of it. And she was saying, you know, the reason why he interviewed me because I got the number one song, her song, WAP, W-A-P. Y'all know what that stands for. Google it. And she was just defending herself, saying, you know, I'm popular. I got the biggest platform. I got a lot of followers and fans. and I can get millions of people to go vote for Joe Biden. And she was saying it kind of like she was bragging. And y'all can have your own opinions about that. It doesn't really matter. She could do whatever she wants to do. And Candace Owens, however, was just saying Cardi is not a very intelligent person. She's you no know, seemingly illiterate. She does not represent you no know, black culture. But the thing is, she is as popular as she is for a reason, because there are a whole lot of people, uh, people of color who have decided that Cardi B is a person that they want to follow. Cardi B is a person of influence. She is definitely an influencer, whether you like it or not. She is definitely an influencer. And this is why somebody like Joe Biden. And his campaign, they looked at it and said, all right, we need to get some black votes. Who's a really popular black person that we can leverage to get more attention to our campaign and get them to come vote for Joe Biden? And they said, Cardi B. Why did they pick Cardi B? Now, I don't I'm not on work inside Joe Biden's campaign. So I'm going to make some assumptions here. I'm going to assume one of the reasons that Joe Biden chose Cardi B is because he knows Cardi B is probably not going to ask him any questions that he can't answer. <laughs> he's not, she's not going to ask him any questions that he's going to be uncomfortable with. She's not going to challenge him in any way. It seems like, whether you're a Biden fan or not, it seems like Joe Biden mentally might be you know, starting to slip a little bit. Well, how old is he? 70, 80 some years old, whatever he is. It seems like he's starting to mentally slip at times now and then. He probably doesn't want to face anyone who's going to challenge him mentally where he has to think quickly on his feet. Now, that's why I believe it'll be very interesting if he and Trump have live debates. And I will definitely watch those. However, when it comes to these interviews that he can schedule and set up and all of that, he knows Cardi B can't pull. Cardi B's not going to pull anything out of left field. She's not going to throw a left hook at him that he wasn't ready for. And again, I'm not mad at Joe Biden for doing that. He sees the truth that Cardi has influence, a lot of it. She has the most popular song, whether you like that song or not, whether you like the idea of the song or what the song is promoting. It is the most popular song, which means there are a whole lot of people that look like you, no matter what color you are watching this. There are a whole lot of people who look like you, who like that song and in some way, shape or form, aspire to what Cardi has, whether that is her uh, financial success, whatever that may be, what her atten the attention that she has, her ability to just uh, get people to pay attention to what she's saying and repeat what she's saying and doing. Uh, the fact that she's interviewing somebody who's running for president and may end up being the president. And I want to I want y'all to understand our culture is the only one. I talked about this way back. This is like right after the when it, 90 days ago, when this whole social unrest started in early June. I said this, the social unrest started in late May. But in early June, I posted something on my IG and Facebook where I said our culture. When I say our culture, I'm talking about what some people call black culture. I'm talking about hip hop culture black culture, you know, just whatever is going on in the, in the scene. Ours is the only one that promotes athletes and entertainers as thought leaders. No other culture does this. There are very good athlete and singer, athletes and singers and comedians who are Asian, uh, Jewish, uh, white, uh, what other, Latin. None of them push their entertaining stars out as thought leaders to represent the culture. Only our culture does it. You're not going to see, you may see a few people who are you no know, pop culture famous be involved 
and what's going on on in a political campaign, but they're not going to be pushed out as the person that they are pushed out as who they are. They're pushed out as, all right, this is entertainment. We know this person's a comedian. They're going to tell some jokes. Then we're going to get them out of the way. All right, we know this guy's a baseball player. He's going to stand up and look good and smile, and everybody can admire him because he's a famous baseball player. But then he got to move out the way so we can have some real conversation about real issues that need to be handled by professionals. We're going to let this basketball player come out and smile and take a couple pictures. Then he got to get out the room so we can have some real adult conversation about the real things that are going on. And our culture is the only one where we take the athletes and the entertainers and we put them in the room. They're the people that they're presented as thought leaders. Like when they say something, we are soaking it up as if what they're saying is just pure intelligence and is just so smart and is wild. Everybody should follow that. Now, I want to be clear. I'm a former athlete myself, so I'm not here to diss athletes. But what I am saying is just because an athlete said if an athlete's the only person who I hear saying something or if I hear an athlete saying something, you got to look at that and say, all right, what does this person do for a living? Now, listen, if I hear a politician who does politics for a living say something about policy and I think this person is believable, then I can say, all right, I can present that as evidence. What I heard that person say, because I know they do this for a living. Now, if I hear a basketball player saying, saying, saying something about policy. And I'm like, all right, this person may not know what they're talking about. Somebody probably told them to say that. They may have read it somewhere. Maybe that is not even a verifiable source. I'm not sure this person should be leading us when it comes to thinking. They can lead us. They can take pictures and be nice and have influence and say, look, I want to tell y'all that, you know, I'm endorsing this person. I like this person. But at the same time, sometimes that stick to sports thing is really stick to sports. If you don't know what you're talking about in a certain topic, but these days everybody thinks they're qualified to talk about anything. If they're popular enough, they got a big enough platform. As Cowdy B said, she has this big platform. She has a popular song. So she feels qualified to talk about whatever she wants to talk about. And if she wants to influence people to go vote for candidate X, then she feels she is qualified to do that. And she's not willing to listen. She wasn't willing to listen to Candace Owens. Now, Candace was dissing her, so I get it. She wasn't really listening to that. Listen, willing to listen to that. And our culture, though, it's not about the Cardi B's or the LeBron James's or the uh, fill in the blank football player, basketball player, rapper, ESPN talk, talk show host. It's not about them. It's not about what they are saying or what their opinion is because they are allowed to have an opinion. The challenge is for everyone else who is hearing them and seeing them. How could you, when you have a choice to go get information from wherever you want to get information from, yet you hear someone who plays ball for a living, whatever kind of ball, baseball, football, basketball, they say something about some political issue. They say something about a social issue. They say something about some cause that has nothing to do with the sport that they play, which is the reason that they're famous in the first place. It has nothing to do with that. You are buying that as, as gospel, as something that you should follow. Like, how do we know this person even knows what they're talking about? And I'll tell you from firsthand experience, being a professional athlete is a full-time job. So these people who say, well, I could do this and I could do that. No, you can't do this and do that. No, you cannot. You cannot do two things well at the same time. You can do two things at the same time. You can't do them well. Now, you can't do them efficiently, and you're not going to really be producing much value in both at the exact same time. And maybe some surface level value, but not any real deep value in two things at the same time. One of them is going to suffer. Probably both of them will suffer. The whole point being, our culture, this is one reason we became sheep, is that we are following people who are unqualified to lead. They are unqualified to lead. Is LeBron James qualified to lead us on some social political issue? My answer is no. Do I like LeBron James? Yes. Is LeBron James one of the best basketball players of all time? Yes. Does he attempt to do positive things for the community? At least from what I see, I don't know him, but from what I see, yes, he attempts to do positive things in the community. Does that mean we should listen to him as a thought leader? No, we should not listen to him as a thought leader because you know what LeBron James is doing with the majority of his time and his full-time work when y'all in a nine to five job, where's LeBron James? Knowing what you know about him, where is he? He's in the gym. He's lifting weights, he's running, he's shooting three-pointers, he's doing dunks, he's whatever it is you got to do to get good at basketball, that's what LeBron James does. You know how I know that? Because I see how he performs on the court. And because I'm an athlete myself, I know he can't do what he does on that court if he's spending half his time being a social justice activist and half his time playing ball. You can't spend half your time playing ball and be LeBron James. All right, That is impossible. Do you understand what I'm saying? So... Should we listen to these athletes and entertainers when they're trying to tell us what to think and what to believe and what and who to support? The answer is hell no. And this is the thing in our culture. Those of you who are black listening to this, y'all need to know this. Y'all need to understand this and you need to be able to think critically when you hear someone who is probably unqualified to speak on something. How do you know if somebody's qualified or not? Ask yourself what they do for a living. 
All right, Cardi B makes music for a living. That's what she does. All right, that's how she got known. Before that, before she was making music, she was what? She was like a stripper, and then she was like an Instagram something personality influencer, and then she started making music. That's what Cardi B has done. That's her career path. And I'm not saying that to knock her. She's come out and said these things herself. Now, none, nowhere in that career path did she mention social activists. Nowhere did she mention you no know, reading any books. Nowhere did she mention getting any type of you no know, formal education anywhere reputable. Nowhere did she mention ever you no know, imparting any knowledge on anybody about anything. Again, anything useful. Nowhere has she done that. That's not part of her career path. And again, that's not to knock her because if that worked for her, that worked for her. It's all good. At the same time. We got to be able to look critically at her when we see her talking to Joe Biden. That doesn't mean we should go vote for Joe Biden because she said it. Now, if you believe it, then that's cool, but not because she said it. What does she have to offer to you intellectually that you couldn't get anywhere else? What does she have to offer you intellectually that you ain't already got? I can't think of anything. Now, again, if any Cardi B fans or Cardi B herself watching this, it's not a diss to Cardi B. But these are just I'm making a logical argument here as to why. That is not what we should be listening to. And those of you who are not black, I want y'all to understand something. Or actually, you can answer something for me. In your culture, your community, whether it's a religion, a race, nationality, do you all do this? Do y'all send your singers and dancers and uh, online influencers and athletes to represent your, the voice of your community on a serious issue that has nothing to do with entertainment? Of course you don't, because I, don't, I know this to be true. And if anybody here who is not black Please answer that question in the comment section and let me know. Do you all send entertainers, athletes, singers, uh, comedians, TV show hosts? Do you all send these people to represent you all when it's time for a serious conversation on any subject? Do, does your culture follow what one of those people has to say about politics? If one of them has something to say. If one of them even tried to make some kind of statement and tell everybody what to do, people would probably jump up and say, shut the hell up and go back to singing your songs. Go back to dribbling that basketball and go back to telling your jokes and stop talking about things that you ain't got nothing to do with. That's what every other culture, they inherently understand this. That's why the, the entertainers don't even think about speaking up and saying these things. And if they do, they don't get amplified. But only in our culture do those voices get amplified. And this is one of the reasons why we have become sheep. So this point is not limited to people who are. And I'm not saying that doing this means that people are you know, dumb or that they lack intelligence. There are a whole lot of very smart people who fall for this following the entertainers and the athletes, uh, not questioning anything that we hear. I've heard very smart people over the last three months make very, very impassioned statements regarding uh, Black Lives Matter against police, against the system, against oppression, et cetera, et cetera. Even though if you really look at these things, I've, I've said this so many times, I'll probably say it more times moving forward, that these things are not the biggest challenges to black life. The biggest challenges of black life are other black people. This is statistically proven beyond a shadow of a doubt and is not even close. However, these really smart people make these impassioned arguments against something that has nothing to do with the black community, where the black community is the biggest cause of these problems. And when really smart people step up and make these statements, they entice people who are not as smart as them to follow. I'm like, all right, this person is smarter than me. This person is clearly more successful than me. They must know what they're talking about. Let me listen to them. Let me follow them. Maybe they know what I don't know. And this is one of the reasons we have become sheep. Point number two. And I'll answer all questions in the, at the end. So anybody who has a question in the comment section, I will address them at the end. Point number two topic is how black people have become sheep. We care more about what the white politician does or what white people, period, do than what we do. When it comes to our advancement, when it comes to the advancement of black people, I'm not just talking about just any white person, period. I'm talking about when it comes to our advancement, we more focus on them than we are on us. And this applies on many levels. Now, just today on Twitter, those of you who don't follow me on Twitter, any of y'all who use Twitter, my Twitter is at Dre all day. This is a guy named Leonid, Leonidas Johnson. I think I pronounced his name. I'm probably pronouncing his name wrong. But anyway, Leonid, Leonidas Johnson, he posted a thread of 30. Yes. 30, 30 different tweets. Each one of them had a picture of a young black child. A couple of them were Latin, it looked like, but most of them black children. We're talking about age 10 and under who were murdered this year by gun violence. 30 of them. Now, let me tell you what's interesting about this. Each one of those kids was probably, without me even having to go deep into it, was probably shot by a black shooter. The shooter who let off the bullet, they killed those kids. These are kids, 10 years and under, murdered by a shooter who was probably black and not one of those kids was viral. None of those kids' names went viral. None of those kids 
led to or influenced a boycott of a basketball game or a kneeling during the national anthem. Not one of them. Why is this? You know why? You know how I know that the shooters, each one of these 30 kids is probably black? The reason I know is because no NBA player has said their name. There's been no social justice movement for them. There is no hashtag for to you know, bring attention or to, uh, what's the word they're talking about? They wanna you know, use, nobody's been using their platform to draw attention to the names of these kids. You know why? Because the shooter was black. Now if the shooter had been white, what would have happened? If the shooter had been white, or ESPN would have had a, a moment of silence, the NBA would have canceled some games, LeBron James would have been talking about it all day long. Why? Because the shooter had been white. Now, what does all this mean? And this is not to uh, trivialize the deaths of, we're talking kids here. So these are, there are parents out there who lost their children, kids who didn't even get a chance to have an impact on the world who lost their lives. And here's the thing. The whole social justice slash change movement that has been going on for the last 90 plus days, let's say 100 days here in America, is only focused on what white people are doing. It's only focused on, it started off with police, only when white cops shoot somebody, because black cops shoot people too, but we don't hear about that. When a white cop shoots somebody or is responsible for the death, because with the George Floyd thing, nobody got shot, but the guy died. So let's just say a white cop doing something that causes a black death, that's the only thing that gets a good amount of black people up in arms and down on their knees and hashtagging and all, and all this, all this change movement and all these things. That's the only thing that gets people excited. Nobody got excited about any of these kids. Now, again, these, these are children who are just you know, playing outside, sitting on the steps, sitting in the backseat of a car, in their own houses, getting shot by straight bullets, getting shot by direct bullets. Nobody's saying anything. Nobody made any noise about this. I looked through the 30 tweet thread. I looked at every single tweet. I looked at the name, the age, the location, how they died. I never heard of not one of these kids. All of them, and they were all this year, as a matter of fact. This is not like the last 30 years of kids dying. This is 2020, 30 kids dead from gun violence. No hashtags, no kneeling, no boycotts. And the only reason why is because the person who did the shooting was not white. The only time black people, it's the reason why black people have become sheep. The only time black people get excited is when there is a white person to blame. That's it. And then this whole change thing, it started with the kneeling with the cops. Then it became white privilege. Then it was white supremacy. Now it's vote. And what's the voting about? Oh, we got to get Donald Trump out. All right. Now it's all about Donald Trump. Donald Trump is an old white man that ain't shot nobody. He ain't killed nobody. The worst thing Donald Trump could do is post a tweet or say something in a press conference bad about you. He doesn't actually do anything else. <laughs> now, he could represent some things and you may not like him. And that's cool. He can hire people and all of that. But he hasn't done anything to affect black lives directly now because you say he could do some things indirectly he could appoint a supreme court justice this and that listen we're talking about somebody dying from a gun donald trump ain't got a damn thing to do with that all right i think i don't think there's anyone who could disagree with that and neither does joe biden so whether whoever wins the election in the fall ain't got a damn thing to do with black people dying every single day from black people who are shooters 95 percent of deaths of black people are from other black people. This is a statistical truth. So when people get all excited about somebody getting shot, you got Jacob Blake, whose a name of NFL players had his name on their helmets while they're in practice. They're in practice. It ain't even a game. There's no TV cameras, but there were some cameras. That's how we know about it. They put Jacob Blake's name on tape and then they put it on their helmets during practice and they felt like they had to do something. Then you got teams not even practicing that day. Players in the NBA, we already know, sat out a couple days of games because of this whole situation. But none of them said anything when a black person gets shot. And we're talking kids. We're not talking to a grown man or woman who had their own choices to make. Like Jacob Blake made some choices. George Floyd made some choices. Uh, these, these are people who made grown men and women make choices. They, got, they can do whatever they want. And if, they do, if you do something dumb that leads to a cop reacting and then something bad happens to you, I ain't saying the cop was right to do it, but you did something dumb that preempted what the cop did. You chose to do that. An eight-year-old kid didn't make any choices for any of that stuff to happen. So we want to talk innocence and we want to talk things being really wrong and there need to be really justice for people. Then there needs to be justice for a kid if you want to go that route. I'm not saying everybody has to do it. Listen, I ain't no social justice warrior. You don't see me posting hashtags or kneeling or making a big thing about anybody dying. 
But if I was going to go that route, then we got to be we got to make sure we're recognizing everybody who dies, especially the ones who are most innocent. Again, if you did something stupid and then a cop responds and something bad happens to you, well, at least you did something stupid. At least they got a little bit of at least they can defend themselves a little bit. Like, yo, you did something stupid first. Now, eight year old kid didn't do anything stupid, but I don't hear any athlete, any entertainer, any. I don't hear Joe Biden talking about it. Nobody. And this is how black people have become sheep, because we only get excited when it's the white person to blame. Because we'd rather talk about what white people are doing than what we are all doing ourselves. And this whole thing is about equality, right? And the people are talking justice. Justice means that people, whoever do something wrong, something happens to them. And if you do right things, then good things should happen to you. That's what justice is about, right? So if it's really about social justice, if it's about ending inequality, that means we got to be equal when it comes to handing out accountability. We got to be equal when it comes to calling people out. We got to be equal when it comes to making sure justice is served for everybody who was done wrong including the people who didn't do any, they couldn't have possibly done anything to lead to the reaction that led to their deaths. Again, those people whose names we know with the hashtags and the boycotting and the, and the kneeling and the t-shirts, right, at least they got a chance to do something stupid first. what the kids do? That's what I wanna know. For any BLM racial justice kneeling supporters who are watching me right now, please let me know how this makes sense to you because it doesn't make sense to me. And this is why, this is my second point, why black people have become sheep. Here's the third point. This is the last one, I'm gonna take questions after this. Today's topic is how black people have become sheep in the United States of America. The third point is, we don't wanna do the work to create the necessary solutions. This is the third reason we become sheep, because now all we got is people who can point out that there's this problem, this person has created a problem, this person's doing this thing wrong, this person's doing that, but nobody wants to do the work that will lead to solutions being created. Let me make sure I get my, my lighting, my angles right here. All right, there we go. What are the solutions? Well, the whole movement right now going on says what? It says change, right? We're in the fight for change. The NBA supports its players in the fight for social justice and change. And every other company, every company has come out with a statement. We support the change and we want to fight racial inequality and this and that. All good. If you want to support change, it's all good. Here's the problem with the whole change movement that I'm hearing from a lot of people these days. Everybody's talking about change, but nobody's actually volunteered to do any changing. This is the biggest problem with change. Everybody wants to talk about, let's get some change. Nobody wants to change. I ain't heard any NBA player say what they're going to do to actually, how are they going to change? I never, I didn't hear the NBA say, hey, here's the change we're going to make, except they're going to donate some money. All right, everybody's going to donate some money as if that's the solution, which is not the solution. All right, you give a broke-minded person money, they're going to be broke all over again in a year. You give a rich person money, they're just going to get more rich. But the money is not, not the thing that affects the outcome, even though people want to think that. That's not the problem. So when we talk about creating solutions and what are we actually going to do all I hear, all I see is a bunch of finger pointing. All right, we need to, they need to change, the cops need to change, whoever the president is, that needs to change, uh, defunding the police, that needs to change, the governor needs to change, white people need to change, the system needs to change, oppression needs to change, uh, the fact that we ain't got reparations for slavery, that needs to change. All these things need to change, but the only people talking about change are the, everybody talking about change ain't trying to offer to do nothing themselves. It's all about everybody else. And the problem is with black people, we only want change when somebody else is doing the work. I don't hear too many black people taking black people to task and saying, you know what? Here's what we need to do. Here's, here's where the problems are in our community. Here's how we need to get our own community and our own houses in order. And then when we get that together, then you know what? It won't even matter what they are doing out there because you know what? The things that lead them to even being involved with what we got going on only happen because we ain't handling our own business in here, in this house. If we could get together and just do that as a community, then we wouldn't have these problems. Now, again, those of y'all who are watching this, I've asked this question before in other lives. If you are not a black American, uh, you could be black from a different country, you're from a different culture, or you're just not black, period. Does your community have these problems? And this is the reason why it uh, concerns me, because... I don't see these problems in other people's communities, but maybe I'm just missing it because I'm black. I only, I'm most acutely sensitive to what's going on in the black community because I'm black. So if you're from a different community, tell me, do y'all have these problems? 
Y'all have a problem with sending rappers and singers and baseball players to represent y'all on serious issues? Do y'all have the problem of always focusing on what white people are doing? The white people are majority in America. Do y'all have a problem focusing on what white people are doing as opposed to what y'all need to do? When y'all talk about change, do you talk about what everybody else needs to do to help you out? Or do you talk about what y'all need to do yourselves to get your stuff together? Or actually, do y'all not even need to have those conversations because it's inherent in the culture that everybody already knows it. You ain't even got to talk about it. Y'all don't even have nobody in your community needs to say the things that I'm saying right now because it's just normal for y'all. This is just a normal way of living, but we got to talk about it. So can anybody who is, if you're from a different community, a different background, nationality, race, religion, creed, color, let me know in the comment section. Does this happen in your community? Do you need to have these conversations? I think it's just us, but I might be wrong. So somebody let me know. And tell me what community you're from so I know, so I can get some examples here. So now what I'm going to do, I'm going to tell you how you can get this book for free. I'm going to recap my points and I'm going to answer every question in the comments. So if you got a question, go ahead and post it in the comment section. I'm going to address it in one moment. This book right here is called The Mirror of Motivation. It's a self-guide to self-discipline. That's the subtitle. This is one of my 27 books. If you've never read any of my books, this is the book that you read first. I made it free so you don't even have to make a, a big decision about it. The book is free. All you do is cover the shipping to get it. You get it at mirrorofmotivation.com. Now, before you even go get it, let me tell you why you want it. The reason why you want this book is because everybody understands to everybody has goals. If you're listening to me, you got goals. And if you are following somebody whose hat says work on your game, and I got a book right here that says work on your game. I'm going to assume you don't have a problem with work. You don't have a problem with putting some effort in to get a result. So assuming that those things are true, here's the question that you also, you have to ask yourself that many people never ask themselves. After you ask yourself, what do I want? And you ask yourself, what do I got to do? Most people ask those questions. You got to ask yourself, who do I need to be? What type of person do I need to become on the inside that's going to emanate to the outside through my energy, my spirit that will infect my actions that will lead to the results that I want. When you ask yourself that question, who do I need to be? Your actions will have a different energy, a different spirit, and you will get different results. This is the key, the starting point to you getting to where you want to go in life. Who do I need to be? This book will help you answer that question. That's why it's called The Mirror of Motivation. All right? It will help you answer the question. It's not me giving you the answers because you don't need that. That's not really going to help you because if I give you all the answers, what are you going to do tomorrow when you got more questions and I'm not around to answer it? You need to be able to look in the mirror and get these answers. That's why I made this book to help you be self-sufficient. I'm not giving you a fish. I'm giving you a fishing pole with this book right here, and I'm making it free. That's why you can get it at mirrorofmotivation.com. You cover the shipping. The book is already paid for. Mirrorofmotivation.com. That's where you get started. Now, I'm going to recap these three points real quick, and then I'm going to answer questions. How black people have become sheep? Number one. We follow without thinking. Whatever is popular, whatever is the wave, we just follow it without questioning it. And it's not just stupid people who do this. It's very smart people doing this as well. Point number two, we care more about what white people are doing, politicians, cops, government system, than what we are actually doing ourselves. And this applies on so many levels that I already talked about. It. You heard it. And point number three, we don't want to do the work to create solutions. We want change, but we want everybody else to change instead of looking at ourselves and what we need to do to change. That's why the first book I tell you to read is called The Mirror of Motivation. It's not the window of motivation. You know, when you look out a window, you see everybody else. You look in the mirror, you see yourself. That's why you start with the mirror. The reason why black people have become sheep is because we don't look in the mirror anymore. We're looking out the window, hoping that somebody else is going to fix things, hoping that somebody else is going to change while we keep doing the same thing that we've been doing. All that being said, I am taking all questions in the comment section right now. If you got a good one, go ahead and post it. Keep it short. Make sure you get to the point. So, let's see what we got here. I had to adjust a little bit because I want to make sure my phone don't overheat. I've had it overheat on me before while I was doing a live. So, I make sure I don't overheat. Let me make sure I keep it in the shade. All right, now we good. C3 Legacy was going on. D.W. Paez said, I saw a video of Kirk Herbstreit crying over a false narrative. Some many people have become sheep as a disability to their intellectuality. Well, D.W., I talked about that yesterday. That was just yesterday I was talking about the Kirk Herbstreit thing. So you probably missed that live yesterday. But it's, on my, it's posted on my feed. So those of y'all don't know, when I do these IG lives, I put it on that IGTV tab on my profile. So it's not in the main feed. Just click on that tab up there that says IGTV. And all the lives are in there. They're also on my Facebook page, and I also post them on YouTube. But that's a good point, DW. Uh, I did address that yesterday. Big Black Wolf says, I feel that's why Akon doesn't put music like that anymore because he's too busy being the thought leader. Okay, I haven't really heard anything from Akon, but I believe you. 
So he transcended from being just an entertainer to focus on being more socially active. Well, a lot of people have done that. So he ain't the only one. DW said, I saw the highest twins response to Cardi B's interview. She got mad. Oh, yeah, I did see that, that video that they had. They're pretty, they're interesting, those guys. <laughs> Big Boy says he couldn't do both at the same time. Well, at least he chose one. <laughs> said Ronald Reagan was president, though, at one point. So I feel they do. DW says, the white Latino, I don't tell fellow Latino to go crazy loud with their personal voices. I would tell them to shut up and dribble the ball to their profession. Yeah, well, I mean, y'all don't even have to. That's the whole point that I'm making. Ja, M-A-U, appreciate you. Ja says, would have went viral within hours. Yeah, of course. Absolutely would have went viral had a, a white person shot one of those kids. It had been all over the news. DW said, 90% of blacks are killed by other blacks. Some BLM supporters think that's nothing. They only care when a white kills a black because it fits the Marxist narrative. Well, I don't know. If, I don't know much about Marx. I mean, I keep he, keep hearing people say that when they talk about BLM. What I do know about is that we know statistically that black people get killed by other black people way more than white people do. So, if people want to talk about black lives mattering, then you got to care about all of them, not just the ones that uh, get you news headlines. DW says there are Latinos who have a history of illegal immigration, smuggling crimes. Fellow Latinos send a message to end that, but they blame the president. But Trump is doing a good job. Okay. Mikada says, my bulletproof bundle came in Monday. I had the iBook. You loved it so much, you had to get the physical books. That's what's up. We're going gonna, gonna to screenshot that. We're going to use that as a testimonial. That's what's up, Mikada. I'm glad you got them. Congrats to you. Make us a video review. We'll post it. Chillax says, all races kill most of their own race. Black on black, white on white. Stats are about the same. Otherwise, there will be race riots. Well, they're already race riots. <laughs> I think they I think what's going on right now, we can call race riots. I think we can call it that. It ain't crazy everywhere, but in certain places there are riots and it's allegedly all over race. I don't think it's really over race when I see white people out there beating up other white people. <laughs> I don't think that's about race. I don't know what that's about. I have no idea. But again, that ain't my business because I ain't white. And it ain't happening in my neighborhood, so I don't really get concerned over it, but it, I think we can call this race riots right now. What's happening today? Over on Facebook, Lisa Rodriguez said no to the question that I was asking. I think she's answering the question, do other communities have this issue? Joel, Joel on Facebook said, in your opinion, what's the five, 10 year outlook of social inequality in the USA? The outlook is that it's going to get worse. My outlook on social inequality is that it will be more inequality 10 years from now and five years from now. And six months from now, there'll be more inequality. The reason why is because you cannot engineer equality. Meaning, no matter who the president is, no matter what rules and laws and systems and reforms get put in place. I talked about this like three days ago on my live. So I know all y'all don't catch all the lives, but I will tell you that I did talk about this in detail. If you want more context is no matter what reforms you put in place, human beings still have to live with those reforms. So if you make rules and new laws, human beings still have to live with them. Uh, the example that I gave is that if you take everybody in America, you strip everybody, everything they got and give everybody a million dollars. So a person who had zero, now they got a million and a person who had a billion dollars with a B, now they got a million dollars. Everybody has exactly a million dollars. Everybody's equal, a million dollars each. Within one year, a bunch of people are gonna be broke and a bunch of people are going to have way more than a million dollars, even though the system was set up to give everybody an equal amount of money. How is that possible? The reason that's possible is because human beings still have to live no matter what situation you set up. No matter what the system is, human beings have to live. And there are stupid people who are going to make stupid decisions no matter what situation you put them in. And there are smart people who are going to make smart decisions no matter what situation you put them in. You put them in a rough situation where nothing is in their favor, they will figure it out and they will make success. You put a dumb person in a fortuitous situation where everything is set up for them to succeed, they will still find a way to fail because failures will always find a way to fail. Successes will always find a way to succeed. I believe that. I've been preaching that for the last 15 years online in different ways from different angles but the bottom line message is that always so do i think inequality so social inequality five ten years it will only get worse now here's the reason why joel to finish answering your question because there are stupid people in this world who are alive today they will be alive 10 years from now they will be in a worse position 
in 2030 than they are right now. Why? Because they're stupid, they make dumb decisions, and their choices will lead them in a negative direction, no matter what you do. I don't care who the president is, I don't care uh, how many cops shoot whoever, I don't care, as long as they're alive, they will go backwards because of the choices and decisions that they make and the mentality that they bring to life. No matter what you do, that's gonna happen. Losers will always find a way to lose. And people who are winning right now, smart people who are trying to go somewhere and get better and improve. I don't care if that smart person is a, a billionaire right now like Bill Gates or if that smart person is broke right now with $20 in their bank account. But you're doing the right things. You're taking the right actions. You are trying to improve. You're working on your game. You're looking to get better. You're putting positive things into the world. Over the next five to ten years, you will advance and move up. Right, there is no way that you cannot advance and move up in the long run. Five to ten years is a pretty long run. So hopefully, Joel, that answers your question. So the dumb people are going to go this way and the smart people are going to go that way. So the gap between the best and the worst is just going to get bigger and bigger and bigger. Why? Because dumb people can't help it. And smart people can't help it either. So let me see. Charlie says, what would you do if you were in the NBA? Would you rep the BLM to fit in? You know, people have asked me that question and it's unfair for me to answer. The answer is today. I would not take a knee. I would not. I wouldn't even wear the t-shirt. And then people would ask me. I would answer and say why. But it's unfair for me to say that now because I'm not playing now. So if that's, this had happened when I was playing, maybe I would have got caught up in it too because I wouldn't have had the time to look at what's really going on and really think about it the way that I do now. Now as an entrepreneur, you know, my main focus is not social activism. I'm not an activist. But my business is all about looking at what people are doing and the mindsets around it and how we can move forward. That's what I do full time. When I was playing ball, I, would, I did that a little bit, but I was full time playing basketball. So when I was playing ball, maybe I would have got swept up in the same stuff the NBA players are swept up in. Why? Because their full time job is not thinking about these things. Their full time job is playing basketball. So hopefully that answers your question. So I would not stand today, but like I said, if I was playing and it happened then, I wouldn't have had the space to really think the way that I think now. DW says, I hear about Cannon. No, I didn't. I don't know who that person is. Going to throw it like, well, Jacob didn't die. He's alive, in case you didn't know. Choak says, why would they protest about Cannon? The alleged shooter has been charged. Justice has been served. Yeah, I don't know who that person is that y'all are talking about there. Sawe says, how do you stop worrying on the things you can't control? Are you, I think you asked me that question the last time you was in a live and I answered it. Are you, are you a slow learner? Because I know I answered that question. DW says, the hypocrisy about the media, if a thugs doesn't comply, they riot, shooting was justified. I saw Brandon Tatum's good point. Cannon and it had zero coverage. Yeah, well, I didn't see that, so I can't even speak on that, whatever it is y'all talking about. But you might want to do a live on that. Uh, those of you, whoever, those of y'all who are talking about it, you might as well do a live on it. And get your thoughts on the record. That's why I tell people sometimes. Get your, get your thoughts on the record. That's why we got these lives today. So everybody, one more time. Mirrorofmotivation.com. The book is already paid for. You just cover the shipping. Once you order that book on the very next page, I'm going to make you an offer to get a bundle with this book and my book called The Mental Workbook, which allows you, not allows you, but will show you how to create the mental conditioning system to condition your mind to be the person that you need to be. Work on your game. That's this book. You get this, an offer to get this after you go here. So go to mirrorofmotivation.com. It's the only thing you need to remember. Mirrorofmotivation.com. Claim your free copy of this book. After you claim your copy and put your free, your shipping information in, on the next page, we're going to make you an offer to get this book and some other things. So you ain't got to worry about how to get this. Just go here and we're going to take care of the rest. We professionals over here, you know exactly what we're doing. So that's mirrorofmotivation.com. Let me see. DW says... All right, yeah, DW, you might have to do some lives, man. It seems like you got, a lot of, you got a lot of things to get off your chest. So everybody, I do these lives every single day. The topic is not always the same. It's not always about social justice, but as long as this stuff is going on, I'm sure I'm going to have things to say and talk about it, but it's not going to be the same thing every day. Sometimes it's an evergreen topic that has nothing to do with this. Sometimes it's something that has everything to do with this. But whatever's on my mind, whatever I think will be a good conversation, that's what we do here. I do always take questions. So if you got questions on the subject, you can always bring your questions as long as they're respectful and you're respectful of everybody else in the room, then we all good to go. I do post these on my YouTube after, but it might be a long time before this comes out on YouTube simply because of the scheduling, all the videos we got. These always are on my Facebook page, Facebook slash work on your game and on Instagram on my IGTV tab. I don't always post them on my main feed, but the IGTV tab, they're always there. 
So I appreciate y'all being a uh, attentive audience and asking some good questions. Give me some feedback. Stay tuned for the live tomorrow. Just watch my story. Whatever I'm going to talk about. Usually I talk about it maybe earlier in the day or I'll post a countdown or I'll post a poll and even let you vote on it. Whatever I decide, we're going to do that day. So stay tuned. We'll be back tomorrow. Everybody work on your game. Dre all day. We out of here.